elements and the periodic table. We're going to look at the atom. Okay, back in grade 9, we learned about the uh, atomic theory of matter. Okay, and pretty much um, elements are the basic substances that make up all matter. Okay, so we look at the periodic table and each, you know, they all represent different elements. Okay, combined as atoms, they form various molecules and compounds. In 1809, John Dalton described the atoms as solid, indestructible particles that make up all matter. Many reference uh, materials refer to Dalton's concept of the atom as the billiard ball model. Scientists have modified several of Dalton's ideas based on later discoveries. So what we have is Dalton's atomic theory. So what he pretty much uh, put together were his own theories about the atom. All matter is made up of tiny particles called atoms. An atom cannot be created, destroyed, or divided into smaller particles. Yes, there are, you know, there are smaller particles which are considered subatomic. <coughs> particles, but all together they form the smallest unit that we can possibly have. The atoms of one element cannot be converted into the atoms of any other element. Okay? So if you have a molecule of hydrogen, it's not just going to turn into helium. Okay? It's not going to turn into oxygen or carbon. Okay? So whatever the atom is, it's going to be that atom. Something else is going to be something else. Okay? All the atoms of one element have the same properties, such as mass and size. These properties are different from the properties of the atoms of any other element. So. If we look at the mass number, notice how the mass number is different from, you know, element to element to element. None of them share the same mass number. Okay, and we'll look at what uh, the combination of the mass number will give us. Um, atoms of different elements combine in specific proportions to form compounds. If we look at a molecule of water, what is the formula of water? H2O, right? So this molecule of water is going to be the same always. It will be your one oxygen bonded to two hydrogens. Okay, So it's a definite proportion in terms of for every molecule the same, you know, the same compound. Okay, So if we're looking at water, you know, it's always H2O. One oxygen, two hydrogens. We look at CO2, carbon dioxide. Okay, We have one carbon, two oxygens bonded surrounding it. So, modern view of an atom. An atom is the smallest particle of an element that still retains the identity and the properties of the element. Okay? So if we take any one of these elements in the periodic table and we isolate it in terms of the atom, okay, we are looking at that atom being consisting of these subatomic particles called protons, electrons, and neutrons. Okay? We know that pretty much within the nucleus, I don't know if it's a different color, Okay, within the nucleus, let's draw the way we knew it. Yeah, so within the nucleus, we knew there were protons, there were neutrons, okay, and surrounding that, were electrons. So we had negatively charged subatomic particles circling the nucleus. But the entire, pretty much, the entire mass of the atom lies within the nucleus, within that cluster of protons and neutrons. Okay. Protons and neutron clusters uh, together to form the nucleus of the atom. Electrons circle the nucleus of the, of the atom. We know that pretty much in any type of a reaction, what is more likely to, um, to combine or to interact with any other atom will be whatever surrounding it. So everything, all the electrons that are surrounding the nucleus are what's going to interact with other atoms, okay, to form the bond, right? Remember, if if we look at the uh, the forming of any type of bond, we think of ionic bonds, right? Ionic bond, metal, non-metal, how they interact, right? Metals lose electrons, non-metals gain electrons, forming a charge that charge between positive and negative attract one another and that's how they bond but notice 
what helps to do the bonding. It's the electrons. If we look at a covalent bond, a covalent bond is between two or more nonmetals, and they share electrons. Okay, notice again, it's the electrons that are interacting with other atoms when they're forming other compounds. Okay, so the nucleus consists of the protons and neutrons. Surrounding this nucleus are the electrons, and the electrons, as I said, are the ones that actually interact with, with any other um, atom. So properties of protons, neutrons, electrons. Uh, the electron, what's the charge for the electron? Negative. negative, right? So we have a negative charge, put it as a negative one, so each one represents a negative one charge. Okay. The symbol for an electron, we use the letter E and a little negative. Okay. The mass, 9.02 times 10 to the power of negative 28. We're going to look at that, uh, what that all means in a second. And, so, and that's in grams. So look at that, negative 28, right, in terms of, where if we're looking at it in terms of what are the real number is going to look like, imagine all those zeros after the decimal. We're talking about a really, really small number, okay? And that's why grams is not really, and as we're going to see in the next slide, grams is not exactly the best unit to use when talking about um, the mass of these uh, subatomic particles. So the radius smaller than 10 to the power of negative 18, and we're talking about in terms of meters. Think about how many zeros that is, okay? So really small. Proton, positive charge. We use the letter P with a positive, okay? The mass, okay, slightly greater than that. Okay, not really slightly, a lot greater than that, okay? So, not as many zeros after the decimal. And in terms of the radius 10 to the power of negative 15. The neutron, there's no charge, so a zero charge. We use the letter N to the exponent zero. Okay. The, uh, the mass of the neutron, exactly the same as that of the, um, of the proton. Okay. And the radius, same thing. So that notice the size of the proton and neutron. If we look at the combination, okay, so think back now, if we were to combine the amount of protons with the number of neutrons, what number will it give us? What number will it give us? The mass. The, what kind of mass, what do we call that? The atomic mass. Okay. So we combine these two together, we form the atomic mass. So really, what does not really make any difference to the mass of the atom? What really has no real say in, in how the mass of the, of the actual atom? Electrons. The electrons. Right? The electrons don't really play a role in the mass of the, because they are so small. Okay? The real mass lies within the nucleus of the atom. Okay. Because remember, remember how we calculated the number of neutrons. We can't find that number in the periodic table. Right? We have to make the calculation, right? Remember? The atomic mass subtracted by the atomic number gave us the number of neutrons. 